Hey, what's going on, everybody? This is Sam Kwok here, one of the Kwok Brothers, and welcome back to your next Stimulus Check News. This is September 2nd, 2020. Here is your next Stimulus News. Now, guys, I have lots to cover today, and first thing I'm gonna tackle is the eviction moratorium. So, it is believed that the White House is starting to use the authority of CDC to enact a eviction moratorium till December 31st, 2020. So pretty much to the end of the year, the White House is using and enacting the memorandum that's, that President Trump signed that would go in effect to halt all evictions till the end of the year. Now, there are some stipulations with this. If you are making more than $99,000 a year as a single filer, you can still get evicted. So the rule is if you make less than $99,000 a year as a single filer, you're protected from an eviction uh, till the, December 31st. If you are a couple, if you're a family married, making less than $198,000, you're also protected from an eviction from happening till December 31st, 2020. Now, of course, the logic is if you're making more than $99,000 a year, you're probably doing better than most. Therefore, they're looking to protect individuals that are making less than $100,000 a year. Now, for another big news, the Republican senators and lawmakers are putting together a proposal to be released next week. Now, as you know, just a reminder, next Monday is when Congress is coming back for another session, September 7th. So this means that we can see another potential stimulus package proposal introduced next week. Now, in regards to the proposal, White House Chief of Staff Mark Meadows seems to be hopeful and optimistic about how the Democrats may respond to the Republican bill. In fact, even Steven Mnuchin, the Secretary of Treasury said it may be acceptable to the House as well. Speaking of Steven Mnuchin, there was a phone call yesterday between Steven Mnuchin and Nancy Pelosi, which led to a progress that didn't really go anywhere, and of course, nothing really happened, other than the fact that we can clearly tell that the funding for state is the biggest obstacle. There's about a trillion dollars of difference when it comes to funding for local government and states, and that is what is holding back the stimulus package from being passed. So that is the biggest hurdle, although we did hear Nancy Pelosi say that she doesn't mind passing the funding for state till January. But it seems like both sides are still stuck with that issue, the funding for states and local government. Now, additionally, in that 36-minute call between Nancy Pelosi and Steven Mnuchin, they also mentioned, and they're angry at the fact that you have not smashed the like button on this video yet. So go and turn that like button to blue, give us a thumbs up, and help us out with our YouTube algorithm. Which, by the way, Steven Mnuchin and Nancy Pelosi didn't say that. That was a joke. Now, with the anticipation of this stimulus bill and stimulus package, it is likely that the details and the information about the bill could be leaked before the proposal is actually introduced formally in the public hearing. Now, if that does happen, we'll get the information for you guys so that we can give you guys the latest update and what we are hearing about the next potential stimulus package that can be passed. And this is it, September 7th, Congress is back in session, which means that they're gonna have a full long discussion about the stimulus package. And that's on the center stage. That is the big elephant that needs to be addressed in the room. So what does that mean? Well, you gotta subscribe to our channel if you guys want the latest information and the updates when it comes to the stimulus package and what's happening in the economy. Now, moving on to the third update. As of yesterday, September 1st, President Trump's executive order is now in effect when it comes to the payroll tax deferment. Now, remember guys, this is not a payroll tax cut. This is a payroll tax deferment, which means that eventually you as a taxpayer will need to pay for the payroll taxes eventually next year, April of 2021. It is possible that President Trump and the rest of the legislative government may pass a bill or a law that would forgive the payroll taxes. Therefore, it essentially would become a payroll tax cut at that point. But we don't know yet. We don't know if the payroll taxes will be forgiven or will disappear completely. All we know right now is that the payroll taxes are simply postponed and deferred till next year, April 2021. Now, if you are an employee, you can let your employer know that you will want your payroll taxes deferred till the next year. You have that option. Now, if you are an employer or you're, you are a business owner, you can also participate in this program by holding on to the payroll taxes and deferring it so that your employees will take home a larger amount of check. Now, of course, there's a concern that, of course, if the payroll taxes don't, 
get forgiven or don't get cut by next year, then the individuals have to make that payment to the IRS. Now, another fellow YouTuber, me, Kevin, as you guys may know, mentioned this idea, which actually seems like a pretty darn good of an idea, which is if you are an employer, if you are a business owner with employees, yes, you can participate in the payroll tax deferment, take the money that you would have paid for the payroll taxes, move it over to a trust account or a third party escrow account, and hopefully it might be interest yielding, right? It pays interest on that money. That way, if the payroll taxes are forgiven, you could take the money out of the trust account or the third party escrow account and pay your employees a nice little bonus check for their payroll tax deferment. Now, if the payroll taxes don't get forgiven, then you can of course take the money and pay the payroll taxes and send a check to the IRS. So that's actually not a bad idea, not my idea, right? Credit goes to me, Kevin, there, but pretty darn good as far as keeping the money stable. That way the money doesn't disappear. And of course, making sure that our employees and employers are being taken care of. So that is the news that I have for you guys when it comes to payroll tax deferment. Again, starting yesterday, you can participate businesses. It's up to you guys to elect into the payroll tax deferment. Now, fourth news, this is more of a bonus for you guys, not really a stimulus news, but I think it's still relevant as to what's happening in the economy. The Federal Reserve released a 10-page report. Now, the Federal Reserve is our central banking system. They control the monetary system in our country. So very, very important when it comes to issue, when it comes to banking relationships, loans, and other matters when it comes to our money. So Federal Reserve released a 10-page report saying that the inflation may not be likely for the next five years. So inflation is gonna remain steady for pretty much the next five years. That also says that interest rates will also stay steady for the next five years or so. So what that means is that interest rate will not change. Right now it's at 0% when it comes to Federal Reserve rate, which means what banks borrow from the Federal Reserve as part of our central banking system is at 0%, which of course, Federal Reserve can't go any lower than that. Otherwise, we will go into negative interest rate, which hasn't done before in the United States. It has been tried by other countries, but never done here before in the United States if it ever goes to negative interest rates. A lot of interesting would happen if that would be the case. So bottom line, inflation will remain steady. Interest rates will remain steady, which means that the current demand that people have when it comes to buying real estate or borrowing money will remain steady because the money is cheap. It's super duper cheap. So that's a little update for you guys when it comes to the Federal Reserve. Now, of course, Daniel will provide you guys more updates with our weekly housing market report and housing market updates. So definitely stay tuned and subscribe if you guys want the latest. Now, little shameless plug for you guys is if you have not gotten your book, our copy of the book, zero to 75 units in one year, definitely grab it now. The best part about this book, it's absolutely free. It, you pay zero other than the fact that you do need to pay for shipping and handling. So what is this book all about? Well, I'll make this real quick. I, I know you guys have to go, but this book is all about if you are interested in buying rental properties or you want to buy apartments so that people can pay you rent, how nice is that? We're gonna teach you how my brother and I were able to buy 75 units of rental properties. That means 75 families were paying rent to us, which is pretty cool. So we're gonna teach you how to do that without using your own money or credit. And I get it, a lot of you guys are saying, well, Sam, I'm not Donald Trump. I don't have money to just buy apartments when I want to, want to. Well, that's it. So we're gonna show you how we did it as college kids uh, in buying real estate, rental property, investment property. So again, this book is zero dollars. All you have to do is pay for shipping and handling. That link is down below. It's zero to 75 units.com. Go and grab your free copy today. We'd love to have you guys get this uh, in your hands. So with that being said, that's all the updates I have for you guys today. Be sure to subscribe and I'll see you guys tomorrow's update.